Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sunrise channel, my name is Shanks. In 2D, we are playing a 2v2 match on a beautiful map on Orion in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. Everybody is picking random and we get to play Isengard faction. Okay, so we are double Isengard against two randoms. We need to first of all vault check to figure out what the enemy factions are. We cannot figure out exactly if this is Gondor or Rohan, but we can tell if it's going to be evil or good. So I like to open with two furnaces just to have like a great amount of resource income every time I play a 2v2 match with Isengard on the map Anorian. It's the most reliable opening actually because you know if you build a Uruk pit at the beginning of the game you heavily rely on the resource income you generate actually inside your you know outside of your castle at the lumber mills. However if you lose them it will hurt you a lot. So we have a good faction player at the top right side. Look at this Orfang, boys. Orfang looks beautiful, am I right? I like this change a lot. So my ally is also Isengard. Uh, we have double Isengard. It's not the best combination. You know, two factions of the same kind is not the best when it comes to player 2v2 match. And the bottom right player is actually an evil faction player. And that's going to be our target. It's Isengard too. So we have actually, from four factions, three Isengards included. I mean, Saruman would be proud. Make additional workers, and if we don't lose those mills anytime soon, we will grow rich. We will be rushing loot in the situation, and then I would like to recruit some work riders. My ally was actually pretty unlucky because he's starting with the Uruk pit and getting attacked at the same time. He will be losing this mill to the war chanted Uruks. He has no chance, and that is what I'm talking about. His eco now won't be that great. Trust me on that one. And also, the enemy Isengard player was actually starting with the Uruk pit. So out of all three Isengards, we are going to be the one who is going to make bank, guys. Trust me. So we have a third furnace coming up. I would like to build at least one or two more furnaces before we will save up for Lourdes. Um, this way, you know, we will have great amount of resource income per minute. And you need to keep this as high as possible. So this mid is going to be taken down. We can even turn and fight them right after that because we have Warchant and he doesn't. Warchan offers you 50% more damage and 50% more armor, which makes it simply to the very best uh, power point from the spellbook of any faction at the beginning of the game. And it also scales into the mid to lead game, you know, it doesn't stop scaling, you know, having 50% more damage on point, point and click, is just awesome. So we can fight this and now even buy this Lammer Mill if we can. Now we have, we have the money, let's buy it and let's keep fighting, I don't want to lose this mill right after purchasing it. We are still war chanted and we are healthier. I mean, we won't chase him down all the way to his base because he has a tower coming up. So this mill, unfortunately, is going to be taken down. But when we use the workers nicely, we can actually deny Rohan to capture this. So it's a double Isengard against Isengard and Rohan combination. They have the better matchup. So the tower is going to shoot them down. Our goal is just to actually deny him from capturing the settlement. Turn and fight. We won't be able to deal much more damage. But we at least were able to destroy one of, his, one of his mills and actually capture the mill for ourselves. It means right now, even though we lost our starting mill at the front side of the castle, they have still two mills, which is great because the mills are giving you the wood bonus, making our structures inside the castle cheaper. Okay, so... Oh, no, hey, don't touch them. Please, worker. Oh, nice. We killed the full bestia. <laughs> That's triggering, I know. I mean, when you realize you cannot kill the mill, just kill the workers. Oh, no, 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 no. Can I snipe this? No. No, that was really close. Almost. Okay, we have enough money for lords now. Let's go for lords. And let's kill as many workers as we potentially can. So we can even group. And I don't know if he has Warchant. Let's ping him, maybe. Warchant here. Oh, never mind. It's very unlike. Oh, he actually missed also. Never mind. It's okay. You know, Isenga player was actually using Warchant on his, on his allies. So hit him too. So it's fine. Because that, you know, every time you draw attention and you put pressure, that means you, in the meantime, will be untouched. So now, now we have almost a full base. The last spot is going to be safe for the War Pit. Because War Riders are going to be nice when it comes to fight for the map control. Uruk Pit, in this kind of situations is more like a defensive style. And remember, our ally is also Isengard. It means we don't really need the Uruk Pit because he has the Uruk Pit. We can now creep the War Clear. Let's actually right-click on the Cripple. Cripple can one-shot one of the Wargs from the Lair. I mean, <laughs> the farm is actually quite beefy against the normal battle towers, sentry towers around the castle. It will take us ages to destroy it. 
So now we will need the warp pit as soon as possible. 700 is needed for that one. And then we are good to go. So, uh, you know, normally, uh, what I could also do in this situation is actually go for the middle camp and capture the middle camp and get like in the center of the map Anorian and get a very strong point, you know, in which we can kind of group, gather all the units and attack and go back when, it, when it's needed. Hold on a second. He's not paying attention. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Okay. He might lose the Uruks there, by the way. Oh, he's repairing. That's what it is. <laughs> he's repairing with the peasants. I was wondering why this farm is actually healing when I'm shooting it. Now it makes way more sense. Okay. So, Warg Riders. You will need a lot of them. Hey, don't. Don't attack me, Warg. So, we can actually cripple him and one-shot him. Watch this. Don't move. Boom. Level 2. Level 3 unlocks the carnage. And level 5 is the power spike we need to unlock the 60% additional damage leadership for the Divine Allied units. Around Lords. Level 3, get the money, get out. Get the money. I mean, we will take a lot of damage from the Warg. Maybe I'm gonna actually lure him into the towers. Even though we have no towers in the front side just yet. And when it comes to build battle towers, guys, don't hesitate. Because only 150, but they offer you actually a lot of security. You know? And better safe than sorry. You know, trust me, losing a furnace is worse than building two towers. Okay, so let's kill the farm first with the Warg Riders. We should be able to do that, no problem. And Lourdes can now creep the troll layer at the top side of the map, Anorian. I mean, these peasants are actually annoying. Let's kill them. They were repairing the farm while we were trying to destroy it. Come on now. We will secure the troll creep, no problemo. And our ally was kind of getting back into the game after a really rough start, but we should be fine. And uh, we will be not able to hold those mills uh, outside for a long time because Rohirrim, he will be pressuring us. And there, come, there they come, you see? Level 3, they were creeping already. But we can fight this. Let's use Palantir for additional movement speed, hole ability for 30% more damage and 30% more armor. And Vorchan, we can, if he, you know, wants to fight, we can fight him. Let's creep this. You want to fight? Let's use Warchan. Now we have 80% more damage and 80% more armor. He cannot win. There is no way. Even if healed, you have no chance. You cannot fight against Warg Riders when they have whole ability. Unless, unless you have Teodian around or unless you have upgrades. Warg Riders are actually a very strong and reliable early mid-game unit. They will, they will fall off eventually late game because they have not the chance, unlike the Rohirrim from Rohan faction or the Gondor Knights from the Gondor faction, to get the Knight Shields or the Horseman Shields. Cripple. Oh, we have no Cripple. Unfortunately, we actually crippled the troll to kill him a bit faster. I'm regretting my life right now. So we have three battalions. We can cancel this and demolish the war pit and go for the armory next. Carnage to kill it a bit faster. And let's capture, recapture this mill and build the armory to give those war riders some weapons like forge blades and heavy armor. But now it's about to pressure the evil faction player at the bottom right. So what is what is Elma doing there? Hey, Elma, you want to die? If yes, run into my lord. Let's catch him, guys. Let's actually cut his way off. Yeah, yeah. Do it, do it. Run into me, please. Cripple. Cripple, lords. Oh, do it. Oh, he will miss it, right? He will miss it. Oh, my goodness. Lords, you are bad. I don't mean it in a good way, by the way, lords. Cripple and Fireball are the only two abilities in Battle for Middle of One that can be missed. So if the target is getting out of the range as you're trying to hit them, it will go on cooldown, but it won't hit the target, and that's really bad, you know? Okay, let's destroy the... Oh, oh, be careful, Pikeman. Peel back, peel back, peel back, peel back. Okay, we should be fine. You know, deal some damage and get out. There is no reason to overcommit. When you, when you are not sure that you can save them, it's not lose war. It's not uh, worth losing them for one single army mill. So it's better to peel back and wait for the ally to be ready with the combos because combos are going to be able to kill the enemy pikemen anyway. Then we can do some stuff. Kind of said that I couldn't get the last hit there with Lourdes to get him to level 5, but it's fine. We don't need that much experience anyway for Lourdes to be level 5 anymore. And keep up the pressure, boys. Keep up the pressure. Okay. So my ally is getting ready. Let's use Vision of Palanti to see what's going on. Isengard has a couple of pikemen. And, you know, and that's already a really great benefit of going for the Warg Riders. Normally, Isengard, Rohan combination, they would not need any pikemen in this kind of matchups. But our Warg Riders are going to force them to recruit multiple pikemen, which 
is obviously an amount of money they could be spending elsewhere, like getting armory or getting more combos. So you're drawing attention, it's pretty nice. So trying to make the best out of the fact that we have two of the same kind of faction. My ally doesn't even have uh, the upgrades yet, but it's fine. We have now upgrades on the war riders. Uh, we don't have that much money, but industry is going to be, you know, very useful. Let's get level 5 with Lourdes. He's really close. There we go. Level 5 is unlocked. Kill the farm. And now put pressure on him. So I believe Rohan is kind of recovering a little bit. But he needs to send help to his ally, otherwise this Isengard will fall down. Cripple, cripple Lord, maybe? Okay, let's get him more blades. Cripple, maybe he's not paying attention. We can kill his Lord right off the bat. If he doesn't pay attention. Warchan has been used on his clap crossbowman, but they can't do nothing against the war Riders. Oh, he's actually paying attention. Oh, no. Let's use Carnage because Carnage also gives us 20% increased armor, which hopefully will offer us more survivability. And we can eventually, you know, hopefully be able to survive that. Come on, Lords, move. Dude, the cripple duration, though. The cripple duration feels extremely long. Look at that. I cannot move, like, for, I don't know, 30 seconds. 30 seconds is a long time. Look at that. His Lords is dead long time ago, and I can still not move. Maybe we should make it so if the Lord dies, you know, the enemy Lords, if the Lords who crippled you, if, he, if you get to kill him, the cripple duration should be falling off. Let's get the settlements too. And now we can even buy the middle camp in the middle. Build another furnace and then we can actually start recruiting some siege weapons. In this game, I actually want to build uh, multiple siege works and spam rams. Unfortunately, Grunt doesn't exist in Battle for Middle of One, but if we, you know eventually make like enough rams it will be a little representation of what grunt is standing for you know so instead of screaming grunt 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 we can scream ram 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 <laughs> all right so rohan we can scout this a little bit what he's doing by putting lumber mill workers around the castle oh be careful what are you doing boys don't run into the pikemen that's the least last thing you want to do I also need to get more use into the battle stances, you know, because now the aggressive stance will actually make sure that you are always engaging on the enemy units, and sometimes that's not a good thing, but if you don't want that to happen, you can simply switch back to the old ground stance and you are good to go. Elma and his horses are coming, I believe this Rohan is poor, because he was giving one of his settlements to, uh, to his ally, and losing the only farm outside is a Rohan faction, which is only 7 spots in the castle, is not the best thing in the world. He's desperately trying to get up his Elma a couple of levels, but as long as we can keep demolishing the buildings in time and to keep, you know, not taking fights which are not going to be good for us, we should also be able to, in long terms, to deny him the experience to level 4, which is the required level to be able to unlock the Horse Lord leadership for additional damage and combat experience for the Rohirrim and Rohirrim Archers. Yeah, this Isengard doesn't have a chance, boys. Doesn't have a chance. Oh, he actually goes for a trample with unupgraded Rohirrim. That's pretty dangerous. Let's reclaim this. Play it a bit slow. I want my ally actually to, to lose all his army so I can, you know, build an army worthy of Mordor in the middle camp. You might save up for Saruman first, though. You know? Um, let's put all of these units around. So right now, as we are talking, we have two mills. A full base castle with furnaces exclusively, and also a middle camp with furnaces exclusively. Guys, we are the Bill Gates of Middle Earth. Trust me on that one. Okay, so it looks pretty good for us. I don't think anything can be done from the enemy team actually to turn this game around anymore unless someone disconnects or I disconnect. I believe at this stage, even when my ally disconnects, I can win this easily in a 2v1 situation. Because I'm so rich now, you know? And if my ally disconnects, I also get his own base. So I will have two big castles and one middle camp in the map Anorian. That's gonna be big. Warchan and Goham. Let's deal now as much damage as potentially possible. Look at our workers, though. They are actually enjoying... Oh, he crippled the lure from our ally. It's fine, though. I don't know if he can fight this. I don't think he can fight this. Work riders. Oh, crossbow man. They look delicious. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Hey, hey, hey. Be careful, don't feed them with the pikemen. 
and just focus down the structures exclusively. So one thing about the war crowd is their structural damage isn't the greatest, so it doesn't deal they don't deal too much damage to the buildings. I mean they have now hole plus war chan, they should be you know able to to deal 80% more damage, but they don't destroy those furnaces in time. I mean they are still great. Like I said, early mid-game, they are very reliable, but Isengard's main strength in the priority army are the Uruks in the combos. Like Uruk Pikemen, Uruk Kai Crossbowmen, they are the you know the strongest in the, the fastest infantry units in the game. Nobody can run away from an Urukai. Because this is no rubble of mind, please. Orcs, my dear friends. These are Urukai. I mean he has no Urukai now, he has only Pikemen, huh? <laughs> I mean he's so scared of the war riders, it's unbelievable. We see everything that is going on inside the Rohan castle. That's pretty nice. Let's kill the armory before he can buy anything. And look at that. He has left the game. And yeah, GG, I guess. Unless the opponent wants to play until the very end. Even though... Oh, awesome. What? My ally left the game too. Okay. Um... <laughs> you know what? I take it. Dude, guys. Like I said, look at our money. Do you see our money? How much money we got? We have like over 10,000, over 9,000, almost 15k. So we can destroy this castle now and also buy this castle. So it's going to be like a 1v1 situation. However, I will be the one with three big castles and one camp in the map. So hallelujah, boys. We will, you know, we can lose everything and we can rebuy everything multiple times with this much money. Be careful. Hey, my war riders, man, they, they actually want to uh, join the Suicide Squad or something in the upcoming film, you know? I mean, is it even upcoming? I think it's already out, but I haven't watched it yet. And guys, please let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see more PvP content on this channel. Maybe a 1v1. Oh my, oh my goodness. Oh, that's, that's painful. I lost one full battalion, though. No! Run, you fools. The pikes, they are so annoying. They are triggering me. Oh, boys, this is going to be Fiesta now. Okay, so we have three Siege Wardens coming up at the bottom right side, right? And again, our goal is to... <laughs> in total, five Siege Wardens, and our only goal is to turn this Rohan castle. He actually keeps destroying my Lumber Mill in front of... He's desperately trying to actually annoy me. More, more rams. So rams are also pretty cost efficient. They are not the greatest because they are melee Siege Weapons. I wanted to go for the field of fires, but that's not possible. Imagine field of fires with this much money. But let's go for the freezing rain anyway. And let's re recruit multiple of these rams. For a replacement of Grant. We have Saruman also on the field. Let's recapture this one. Let's build a slaughterhouse there. Because ideally, I want to actually fill up the command points with rams exclusively. And he will be surprised about seeing this many rams coming to his base. Now he's building towers and he's assuming that he's fine, you know, he's fine until the ballistas coming, but little he knows they are not going for the ballistas. We go for ram, 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 ram. Okay, so I Hey guys, do you see this juicy combo battalion on top of the gate? Oh, I hope he's not paying attention. Watch this. Look how clump they are. Oh my, that's going to be juicy. Watch this now. Watch this. Do it, Saruman. Do it, do it. Boom! Almost a full... <laughs> oh, we killed almost a full battalion with one single... Fall. Only the banner carry was able to survive. Let's use Vizaplas. Oh, he's going for it. <laughs> Dude, guys, the durability of the Isengard castle once the furnace are hitting level 3 is incredible. Like, you will have pretty much like a full tower base. Sentry towers and every level 3 furnace is not only extremely tanky now, but they are also acting like a tower. So the gate has been broken. But we won't stop here, man. We won't stop here. We will, of course, bring in the big guns. And this is going to be an army of rams. Sarman, we, we might steal them. Fight for me. And I will hold your oaths fulfilled. Hey, look at that. I can even give them upgrades when I steal them. I'm actually very, really, really... What? Didn't know that. <laughs> I'm even learning after this many years playing the FME game that I can upgrade them and I steal them. Didn't actually really know that, guys. I'm actually wondering if they will keep the upgrades if the opponent gets them back. Obviously, you don't steal them forever. Only for a short amount of time. I'm very curious. Let's kill Elma. Die, Elma. Die. Can you die, Elma? You are so tanky. 
You have double loads, double cripple. Oh, look, he's keeping the upgrades too. I actually did him a favor. <laughs> Imagine, you know, you are playing an Isengard mirror. You have upgrades purchased from the armor. You steal like five combos and upgrade them all. You know, a little present for the Christmas. Don't die, Saruman. But he's fine, he's fine. Fireball. Okay. Guys, do you see that? How many rams we got? And that's only the beginning. So, <laughs> look at this. Let's go, rams. Go. Oh, my goodness. Dude. Like, they are also not that expensive, right? They cost only 240 each. So, we can... With this much resource income, we can make command points full with rams only. You have 800 command points, by the way, because if your open, uh, if your ally leaves, you don't only get to keep his castle, no, you also get his available command points. Normally, I would have only 400, but my ally has also 400, so his 400 will be added up to my 400, and boom, you have 800 command points, just like that. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> you know, let's this, let's annoy him. He has like one Rohirrim. They will be eventually able to slowly but surely take care of this Rams. But he has one Rohirrim only against what 500 Rams, not 500, but like 20 20 plus Rams. Fill it the pressure is real, boys. The pressure is real. I mean, I wish I could be get going for the for the field of fires, but I can't. <laughs> This is so funny. This is actually hilarious, man. I've never done this before. Like, I've spammed catapults, I've spammed siege weapons, I've spammed even peasants, but not this many rams at once. I hope you guys will enjoy this. If you enjoy this kind of content, guys, please do me a favor and leave a like on this video. Likes are helping quite a lot. And also, if this is your very first time on this channel, and you are looking for more BFME content like this, BFME 2, Rise of the Witch King, you should also check out my second YouTube channel, the BFME World, which is... And, you know, including all the uploads from the Twitch live stream. So just in case you are not always able to tune into the live streams of Twitch, you can still watch all the videos afterwards, you know, split it uh, game per game or series per series on the second YouTube channel, which is called PFME World. Little advertisement while we are actually taking care of this Rohan castle and turning it into the Mordor castle. Look at this, dude. <laughs> That's so funny. We can cripple him, you know, we could be double cripple always, by the way. We have double lords against one lord. No carnage on this one, he's only level 2, but he's gonna be level 3 very, very soon. We can fight this, no problem. Oh, he got crippled too. We have double carnage. Who now has the strength to not only face against one, but two lords at the same time? Rams don't stop. Don't stop, Rams. Don't stop. Just kill every. He has like a couple of peasants and one lord. That's all he got, you know, because also his ally left, right? And this is the Rohan player. But as his ally left, he also, you know, you get to keep everything that your ally has on the field. If your ally is Gondor, he has Gandalf, Gandalf the White, you keep Gandalf the White. Don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die. Run, 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 Elven summon. Don't, oh no, Lord has, oh, that's not even my Lord. I was the ally's Lord, sorry, ally. I think my ally actually left because he was thinking, okay, it's GG, because the Isengard player left. But we don't leave until we see the victorious screen. You know what I'm saying? More rams are required, boys. We don't have enough rams. Let's go for more and more and more and more. Look at this. Oh no, actually, we destroyed them. Oh no. Okay, whatever. Victorious teammate has been defeated. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please don't forget to leave a like. I will see you next time. Until then. Look, our money though. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.